Welcome to, today, to today's um, ISM New Jersey webinar program on the value of quarterly business reviews and supplier relationship management. Following the program, you will receive a survey and your continuing educational credit will be referenced on that email. So make sure you take a look at that. If you have a question for any of our speakers today, uh, please feel free to use the Q&A or the chat functions. Our speakers for today's program are both from uh, CoreCentric, Ryan Gadley and Gabriella Bittner. Gabriella is a strategic sourcing professional with experience as both a practitioner and consultant. She is solutions-oriented socializing in marketing focused in direct spend categories such as merchandising, print production, product development, and events and trade shows, and has experience in transforming international supply chain processes she has achieved quantitative success working alongside Ryan, helping their clients meet their goals. Our second speaker is Ryan Gaintley. He is a consulting with CoreCentric's Source to Pay group and contributes to strategic sourcing initiatives across uh, their client portfolio. He also works al alongside Gabriella, where they are tasked to supporting large scale sourcing efforts and span across numerous categories. Ryan has over nine years of strategic sourcing experience and specializes in running full-scale sourcing initiatives with the MRO landscape. He holds a bachelor's degree from Temple University and is an active contributor to the Strategic Sourcer blog, as well as actively contributing to Crocentric's web materials. I would like to now turn the program over to Gabrielle and Ryan, uh, and thank you both for joining us today. Thanks, Kathy. Appreciate that. Appreciate the uh, introduction as well. So thank you, everyone, for joining uh, this afternoon's call. My name is Ryan Ganley from CoreCentric, and I'm uh, really excited to share this presentation with all of you today. I'm here with my colleague, Gabriella Bittner, that you'll be hearing from just shortly. So the, the topic we're speaking on today is a very important yet sometimes overlooked piece when it comes to really establishing a successful customer-supplier relationship. In our experience, we tend to see how some organizations keep these relationships on autopilot with, with minimal, minimal account maintenance almost immediately after negotiations and contracting are finished. So with that in mind, our main goal here today is to share some best practices that can help your organization really successfully manage these potential hurdles within today's presentation, which is accurately named the value of supplier relationship management and quarterly business reviews. Which brings us to the next slide. So Kathy did a great job of highlighting who we are. That's me on the left there. Uh, nine years of experience uh, working within the MRO category. And you can see the bullet points on the bottom there in that darker, lighter blue shade, excuse me, kind of highlighting some of the content that I've published on the uh, Strategic Sourcer, which is a blog site of ours here at CoreCentric. That's a little bit about me and what Kathy highlighted for us. And I'm just going to transfer things over to my colleague, Gabriella, where she'll introduce herself and dive into our presentation. So go ahead, Gabriella. Great. Thanks, Ryan. Hi, everybody. I'm Gabriella. Um, as Kathy mentioned, you know, senior analyst at CoreCentric, really working uh, within all uh, across all categories, but really specializing within the marketing uh, focused indirect spend. Um, you know, so think of print production, any events and trade shows, even merchandising, those sorts of uh, categories. And yeah, just really working closely with Ryan, but I'm um, really excited for today. So thanks for joining. All right, so we're gonna start out talking about uh, supplier relationship management or SRM as oftentimes you will see it referred to as. Um, essentially supplier relationship management, it provides a formalized way of interacting and managing your suppliers. So really the goal here is, is to encourage a space or an environment that creates or encourages collaboration, but also any innovation that might not necessarily be there today. I want to take a couple steps back though, because you know, in a standard sourcing process, we spend valuable time and resources sourcing as well as negotiating with choice suppliers. And what we find oftentimes is that the, that management of the suppliers really stops there, but it doesn't have to. Because in, if you continue on in the process of managing your suppliers, your organization can not only maintain, but also improve upon 
any value that was acquired during the initial sourcing event or just to date. And ultimately really just driving success with your organization. And that's, that's the goal for everybody, right? So jumping to the next slide here, you know, thinking about what the main goal of supplier relationship management is. Well, as the name quite literally says, it's really just establishing that mutually beneficial uh, relationship for both the supplier as well as the organization. If you think about, um, you know, traditional supplier relationship, ma supplier management, that really focuses on what's the best component that I can buy and for the lowest price, which still works in many cases, you know, certain categories, certain commodities, that's fine. But what we found is that that mentality oftentimes translates to a win for the organization, but not necessarily for your supplier. So if you think back to those key supplier partners and you know who you're working with within your organization, that equation of organizational win and supplier loss doesn't result in a relationship that's mutually ben beneficial. And at the end of the day, you might be missing out on value that that supplier or partner is bringing to the table and ultimately your business. I saw this quote by um, Chris McFlory, who is the Procurement and Operations Ad uh, Advisory Director at KPMG. And it was an interview that he did with Supply Chain Dive, where he compared supplier relationship management to a guidance counselor saying that essentially they serve as the conduit between the supplier and the business. And I really thought that that uh, was a good representation of the purpose of SRM. Um, it really hit the nail on the head in terms of what we we're trying to portray here today. So with that in mind, how do we unlock the value of SRM within your organization? Well, first and foremost, you need to expand your thinking and really step outside of the box, if you will. That way you can explore new ways to support your business outside of the traditional mindset that once was. And one way to do that is, as you guessed, through SRM. So by properly managing your supplier relationships, ultimately you turn your suppliers into key partners in a very strategic way. And at that time, they can then operate as an extension of your organization rather than independently or in a silo. And you know, when that transition happens, it's really important to recognize that new dynamic. So that way you can nurture the relationship in a way that can ensure long-term success. Um, so you know, early on in the conversation, I really mentioned how supplier relationship management practices should maintain and improve upon any value that was acquired previously or during the initial, during the sourcing event. And what I mean by that is that these practices should complement the, the sourcing process or any activities to date. So whether that's supplier performance or any contract management activities, because by implementing a supplier relationship management program, you're really helping your suppliers do two things. The first is you're helping them achieve and maintain post-contract stability. But you're also really supporting them in meeting and hopefully exceeding their goals. So by doing this, your organization can benefit in many ways. You can you know, reduce the costs through utilizing the, new, the tools or any systems that you've developed as part, of the, as part of the program, excuse me. You can really manage performance because now you have those metrics in place that allow you to track against. You can also mitigate supplier risk to your operation and um, overall supply chain. And lastly, you can just encourage that sense of innovation and continuous improvement through an advisory program that you structure. So, you know, building onto that, how can we achieve those results or those benefits that we just mentioned? Well, for starters, annual savings can be identified 
in ways that move beyond the trend, the traditional cost reduction tactics. Think of, you know, contract restructuring or process improvements or and general demand management. You can really um, properly manage performance by providing your suppliers with transparency in regards to many things like the service level expectations or just really key drivers that you're expecting them to meet based on defined business objectives within your organization. You can also you know, mitigate supplier risk to the operation, like I mentioned, by really establishing tools and processes um, that provide visibility to your organization about the supplier relationship. So maybe perhaps you wanted to implement a monthly status report, just really giving that snapshot to your organization of the overall health of a supplier. And lastly, you know, you, you can increase that collaboration and just, as I mentioned, and, you know, keep, keep repeating here, but that continuous improvement with your strategic suppliers but at an executive level. So by, you know, by truly valuing your suppliers and letting them lead and giving them a voice, their desire to bring innovation and out of the box thinking greatly increases. So having those discussions with your suppliers on a regular basis and, and you know, setting up a regular cadence for that is really important because you're touching on any planning, any um, new ideas, any industry trends that they're seeing. Um, also, you're talking through any risks that they've identified from their end. So it's really important to establish that cadence, which really brings us to you know, our next point and really what Ryan's gonna talk to you about today and in regards to quarterly business reviews, because if you think about it, supplier relationship management is really a broad, a broad term that we, we like to refer to as the umbrella to contract management activities or performance management, risk management, and program advisory. You know, those benefits that you're seeing by implementing an SRM. But the quarter, quarterly business review piece is really how you are um, managing that relationship with your suppliers on a regular basis. And before I go into too much detail, I'll hand it over to you, Ryan, so you can jump in. Thank you. Don't steal my thunder there, Gabrielle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So once again, Ryan here from CoreCentric. Um, just really wanted to kind of tag into what Gabrielle was saying there. So the goal of this part, really to help provide some best practices on, on how to effectively implement a critical process that's sometimes overlooked within the SRM programs that Gabrielle mentioned. So this process is called a quarterly business review. And the purpose of these next few slides is really just to go over the goals and overall process of this concept. So what is a quarterly business review? I really want to read that first bullet point up top word for word because it's important to really define what we're talking about here. So it's a meeting between a supplier and customer on a regular basis to discuss the overall relationship, review established metrics, and long-term goals. So one important thing to really remember here, if you're a large organization with a giant umbrella of suppliers providing services across the board, QBRs will not be a viable solution for every supplier. The goal here is really to identify what I like to call mission critical suppliers that your organization relies on for success. So essentially that supplier's success leads to your success, right? So keeping a pulse on these key suppliers will not only ensure continuous progress is occurring, but it also really helps drive home the fact that accountability and open communication, it's an expectation for all parties involved for the duration of the agreement. So let's go over a couple of the uh, concepts that we have mapped out here. The first one on the left stating key concepts. So you really wanna discuss how the supplier has performed, established goals and expectations moving forward. So we're really gonna be taking a deep, deeper dive into exactly what these talking points should be, but from, from a high level, you essentially really want to highlight where we're at and where we're going between the supplier and customer. Next up in the middle there, manage expectations. If it's important to you, make sure it's in the agreement. I mean, the importance of this, it cannot be stressed enough. To really understand and manage the supplier and customer relationship, these expectations, they need to be clearly defined within the agreement to ensure accountability. It's that simple. I mean, we'll go into a greater detail exactly what those trackable metrics should be, but you really want to utilize this QBR to address quarterly tactical metrics 
and really how they perform against your goals and expectations that have been built upon within the agreement. And finally, on the right there, the end goal, you want to ensure the, suppli the supplier performs better for you than for your competitors. So you really want this supplier to work harder for you and prioritize your best interests over that of your, your competitors, essentially. I mean, chances are your competition is utilizing the supplier in some way, shape, or form. So you want them to work harder for you. And in addition, I really think that QBRs kind of act as like a sanity check for your organization. So you're mapping out clearly defined scalable metrics that essentially confirm whether or not there's a supplier out there that could potentially be doing it better for you than the incumbent supplier you're talking with on these QBRs. So if your supplier you're talking with on these, on these QBRs is maybe slipping somewhere, if they're not making the corrective action you guys are identifying, your organization's identifying, you can start pivoting and going back out to market sooner than maybe two, three years down the road because you have this level of visibility. Which brings us to the next slide. How to conduct a successful QBR. So on the left there, who should be invited? Uh, two pretty self-explanatory bullet points, but I'll dive in. Obviously supplier representatives and customer representatives. And then I have an asterisk on the bottom stating, invite managers from both sides and their reporting directors. So the goal here really is you're looking at this to involve key decision makers and their direct reports. So if, if you're filling the room with anyone who works for the supplier, that's going to be counterproductive. There's gonna to be too many cooks in the kitchen. So keep it high level with key decision makers. So we're looking at something like account managers and sourcing managers from the internal and external side, and then get their respective directors and people that are above them on the hierarchy ladder. Uh, it's, it's important because leaning on this level, it allows for clear communication and escalation where necessary. And that, that helps establish a roadmap for fixing potential pain points. So there's nothing more frustrating than if you're sitting on a QBR and you have some members on the call and open action items are, well, let me talk, get back to my manager about how we can do that. Get them on the call now, you can eliminate a lot of those open-ended items. Next up in the middle, what should be discussed? So you really wanna establish a clear and concise agenda with clearly defined topics, that's critical. And so, Instead of really talking through this over just a couple of those bullet points I have noted there at number two for top examples, we're actually going to go over that in a much deeper dive in the next slide. But I just wanted to kind of highlight to conduct a QBR, you need to really align on what's going to be discussed. And it's mapped out within a clear, concise agenda. And then on the right there, what action items should be established? So depending on who's invited in this meeting, having everyone in the room to secure a date and time for the next QBR, that's crucial really take advantage of this opportunity and get the next meeting on the books uh, reserved ASAP. You, you'd be shocked, but if there's a, a C-suite level employee on there, it's the, the close, the further out you can get that on the books, the easier it is. And especially if you're trying to coordinate in the background, it could take weeks to get everybody's schedules aligned. So have everybody open their calendar before you leave this meeting to get the next one on the books. You also want to take this time to really assign uh, actionable deliverables and goals, not just for the next QBR, but to really talk through any of the, the pain points that require corrective action that have been identified through the meeting. So be sure to assign due dates to those and, and don't forget to send an, an update or a recap at the end of the meeting, essentially reminding everyone of the assigned uh, action items that you guys spoke about. Next up is that agenda that I said we would dive into a little further. So this template laid out, it, it's, it's really built in a way to help map out what a standard agenda and cadence would look like. However, please keep in mind that this is just a guide. So exact topics will absolutely vary based off of the category and supplier offerings. So take this at a high level and modify it as you see fit. So that first piece there, introductions. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just remember, include those key internal and external decision makers I mentioned earlier. We don't want too many cooks in the kitchen. Keep it to the key players and key decision makers. Next piece, that customer update. So this is really where the customer speaks on organizational goals, critical changes, and really how the supplier you are meeting with may fit into these goals. So this might include discussions or updates and forecasted acquisitions, mergers, or even product needs to really help put the supplier in a position while ensuring there's no disruption to your operation. That's, that's a critical piece, obviously. You, you, want, you want things to flow. And so, for example, if there's an acquisition forecasted down the road and you might need a large capital expenditure purchase to onboard that group, now would be the time to speak on it and talk about potential forecasting needs. When, I, when acquisitions happen and mergers happen, there's a lot of moving parts. And so you're going to call that supplier potentially and say, I need 1,000 of item X in two weeks. They're, they might laugh at you. So be careful of those, 
and get ahead of that whenever you can. Next piece of, re of review of, uh, excuse me, review of KPIs, key performance indicators. So this is the part where, where you're really going to talk about the metrics that matter most to your organization and how the supplier scored against them. I have in the next slide to really break down what kind of metrics we'd be scoring the supplier against. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail right now, but you can kind of see the bullet points I have shared there from a high level of, of what, what that might look like. Finally, on to the supplier update portion. So this is where you really learn about the supplier's major news since the last review and how your organization's goals align with those updates. For instance, the supplier may have some new products going through research and development that could really be beneficial to your overall operation. So this is the time to align on those potentially new product offerings. And finally, next steps. This is really where you dive into discussing what KPIs fell short and really have an open dialogue to dissect what went wrong. Was this on the supplier's end? Is there something on your end internally from a process standpoint that could maybe benefit and help both parties? Utilize this time for really brainstorming corrective action to ensure these KPIs recover on, and really meet the agreed upon standards that were established within the agreement. And then finally, timeline and action plan. So this is where we basically align on a timeline for agreed upon corrective action and really get that QBR on the books for the next quarter, like I had mentioned earlier. Which brings us to KPI metric examples. So before discussing these key uh, performance metric examples, I, I really wanna go over a couple of key points here. KPIs vary drastically between whatever supplier or category you're servicing. So like what I did on the last slide, please treat these as high level examples and you really need to pivot where necessary to cater to the category you're working on. Another important thing to remember, when crafting your agreement with the supplier, please be sure to only include critical trackable metrics that are important to the success of your operation. If you're assigning KPIs for the sake of it, it's going to lead to failure, busy work, and just really not do anybody any favors here. So really identify and assign those KPIs that are best for your organization. So let's go to the first portion, which highlights financial performance. So this is where you really utilize the time to talk through reports, highlighting how spend is flowing at both a high level and granular level. So from a high level, it's really important to establish a reporting cadence that shares annual spend, how it aligned with the last quarter, and maybe how it's trending versus years prior to really see what, what trends are doing, going, and, and where things may need to update. And then from a granular level, share reports on how spend is performing at the detailed location level, for instance. So have any locations seen drastic dips or rises in spend? And really also utilize this time to identify high volume items that are being purchased. Have purchases for mission critical items dipped or climbed when compared to last quarter, things like that. So just really talking through the details and, and finding out if there are any trends slipping and what the reasons may be. Next piece is customer satisfaction. So surveys are really big here, um, but keep in mind this will require some homework on your end if you really want to share meaningful feedback and report it back to the supplier. For instance, I found there's a really big benefit in internally crafting brief surveys to really be shared with frontline facing employees that help score against the supplier's results across the board. So that could be quality, delivery, daily interactions with the supplier, the support team, and even purchasing interfaces that, that they're working with. This feedback is super valuable. The process gives a voice to members of your team that aren't a part of this QBR. If you mentioned, I said earlier, having too many cooks in the kitchen, you can still get them involved, but in a detailed, clear, concise, data-driven way. It also really helps us walk through any of those pain points that may be identified or any simple tweaks that could really improve processes. In addition, the supplier can also really utilize this time to, to share some of their own reporting figures to help really give transparency to, to service issues or concerns. So there could be delivery delays, blackouts, tariffs, material shortages, et cetera. And so this is really where you talk through those. Next up is the internal business process. So really utilize this time to talk through invoice reporting. For instance, what number of invoices are accurate? Has a payable, been handling payments in a timely manner? Are invoice templates satisfactory? Or do we maybe need to go through a consolidated billing process or some kind of realignment there? And also from, from a process standpoint, this is really the time to dive into those supplier specific mission critical uh, pieces that I mentioned earlier that haven't been brought up yet. So bring up the reports, that are really containing metrics that really matter and talk through how those metrics uh, tie back to the forecasted goals and expectations uh, tied back into the agreement. And then finally on the bottom there, we have continuous improvement for learning and growth. 
So we touched this, we touched on this in the previous slide, don't want to go into too much detail, but this is really where both sides share data that may not be common knowledge between both parties. Research and development, uh, maybe how things are benchmarked against their competition and any other really impactful industry news. And then on the customer's end, these same concepts could be relayed. So forecasting any unforeseen needs down the pipeline uh, that the supplier may need to be able to get ahead of. So a lot of info to digest there. Thank you for sitting with me on that slide. Just um, like I said, tweak and manage the KPIs you're building out based uh, solely on the supplier you're working with, which is a pretty good pivot to, to this slide here. So uh, this is a nice transition to really help identify two category specific KPIs that established clearly defined reporting requirements within the respective agreements. And these are metrics that were established as vital pieces of their operation to really help with cost avoidance and to really ensure the overall seamlessness and success of their operation. So in short, what I've been calling the mission critical pieces of uh, their organization. So on the left there, case study one, it's a waste management agreement. And we aligned on three critical pieces of reporting. First one being waste overages by facility, hazmat violations by facility, and then a report containing access uh, issues for the actual uh, waste management group to actually get access to those containers. The reason that we aligned on that reporting was every single time one of those incidents occurred, there was a violation fee that was tagged on. So getting visibility to those on a quarterly basis, it allowed, it basically stopped any kind of rogue spend or, dish or unforecasted spend right there in front of us. We could identify location specific issues and get that corrective action in play. Very simple quarterly reports that we could really uh, combat any kind of potential spend that might've been spilling over. Case study two, I have uh, marked as janitorial services of one of our clients. So we established uh, three key things within the agreement. We established a quarterly facilities uh, cleanliness audit. And then within those audits, we established minimum audit scores per facility. And then third, we established reporting required to ensure that there was proper employee training and drug screening. This is a pretty neat agreement that we built out. Um, the quarterly facility audits were actually run by a third party group we identified. And so it really helped uh, get the agreement through the con contracting phase because it would be pretty tough to, for a, a supplier to agree on, we're gonna run an audit and apply scores to it internally and you're just gonna take our word for it based off of it. So massaging through that third party audit process really got this agreement through the finish line. And so we established uh, barriers within the agreement as well, where let's say the facility didn't surpass 85% cleanliness within this audit. We actually instilled penalties within the agreement where we could get money back for the client. So there's a lot of flexibility there within even additional cost savings when you build out KPIs. And then finally, that third employee training and drug screening, the, the uh, organization had very strict uh, federal regulations that required these and really mission critical and important to the success of uh, the organization. So um, we needed to keep that and keep tabs and keep track to make sure that um, employees were being trained and screened properly. And finally, under the last slide here, key takeaways. So first one, big takeaway here, the end goal is to have the supplier perform better for you than for your, competi than for your uh, competitors. So remember, there's a good chance your direct competition is utilizing the supplier as well. So you want the supplier to work harder for you than your competition. And the second point, the terms and conditions within the contract govern the supplier's responsibility back to the customer. If it's important to you, you have to make sure it's in the agreement and track it with, with those KPIs I talked about. So remember here as well, don't lose focus on those mission critical services the suppliers provide for you. So the agreement is the time and place to really establish reporting standards and it really gives you the line of sight needed to ensure the program's success. So with that being said, I wanted to thank everyone for, for jumping in here. And this is the, the point where myself and Gabriella will pause and um, basically open up if we have any uh, questions from the group. We have that Q&A portion where you can submit your questions there. Um, and if not, we can kind of open things up to the floor as well. We have a couple. First one coming from through with Rose here. As far as QBRs, do you really see adherence to that number of meetings? We typically do two per year due to uh, improved attendance. Plus it allows for time to see any corrective action in place. Rose, that's a great question. So it's, there's definitely some flexibility and that needs to be in play there. Um, sometimes we'll do annuals, um, two a year as well. Um, depending on, and I keep repeating myself here when I say uh, mission critical, but 
if this supplier is a part of like the pulse of your organization and if they're if the the goods they're providing to you are slipping or just aren't aren't, aren't where they need to be you need to have full visibility to that so um there's definitely a, a cadence of a back and forth where I mean, you can establish this within the agreement and through the contracting phase of, you know, we can do two per year annual reviews, but um, depending on the importance of that supplier, strive for that QBR if you can, but there, there's definitely, if, if you're getting two per year, one per year, that's just as effective as well. So great question. Gab, anything else there? Sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Okay. Great. Next question is from Kevin. Will you be able to share the presentation with the attendees? Uh, Kathy, are, are you uh, able to chime in there? I believe that that will be happening. Uh, yes. Um, if uh, Ryan, would you be able to send me the slide deck? Absolutely. Okay. So once I get the slide deck, uh, I will be sending out an email. In the email, we're going to be having a survey, but we're also going to have a copy of the recording. So you'll also get a copy of this recording along with the slide deck. So if you know, just uh, as soon as I. Uh, get the information from Ryan, then we'll get it out to all of our attendees. So no problem. Thanks, Kathy. Appreciate it. And Kenneth, that answers your, your question as well. The, the slide deck will be available from Kathy shortly. Any other questions from anyone else? We have a couple of open-ended ones to engage with the group. So um, while people are kind of mapping out some potential questions, I'll, I'll, I'll pivot and open things up to the group here with uh, First question, actually. So I kind of wanted to open this up to the participants here and really see, does anyone on the call have an example they can share related to any KPI reporting metrics they've utilized in the past that's led to a successful uh, SRM program? So while the group kind of thinks about that and you can fill that back into the uh, uh, Q&A portion, uh, my example that, that I'd like to talk about here is something as simple as reporting related to high rolling items and SKUs, that leads to simple fixes. So historically, when you go through the strategic sourcing method and strategic sourcing initiatives, you should have all those high rolling items with contracted spend. And when you're rolling these QBRs or annual reviews even, if you're identifying within these reports high spend items that don't have uh, negotiated contracted pricing, this is where you jump into contracting out an amendment to really capture that additional savings that isn't being caught yet. So um, that's just an, ex an example and an answer I'd like to give there. And Kevin highlighting for us a great response of cost, service, quality, and safety. Uh, all, all, all great things there, Kevin, thank you. And Gabrielle, I'll, I'll pivot to your question on the bottom that you had mapped out to the group. It was, uh, can anyone share a past experience where garnering a strategic relationship with a key supplier through SRM resulted in an innovation of some kind, or perhaps the recognition of an untapped business development opportunity? While we open that up to the group, Gabrielle, I'm not sure if you want to kind of- Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for a print production sourcing project that we worked on, um, we had one of the strategic partners really brought to the table an idea of a demand side print platform, which essentially what it does is prints, easily prints um, products or products that are needed regularly and in a large volume, rather than having to place an order every time something is needed because the specs are all the same. And what that did was that was something that was never done before. It made it easier for ordering to be done because all of the information was already pre-populated in this uh, on the demand platform. And it also, there was uh, cost reductions because there wasn't new orders. The specs were not different every time an order came through. So really it served multiple purposes in terms of innovation, but also cost reduction and just overall collaboration with the team. So it was great. Great. Awesome. Yeah, looks like uh, that's it for that question. Let's see, are there a few more things there? Nope. Oh, we've got one. So Kenneth here coming through with a uh, discussion point saying that our company is presently redesigning our QBR program and deciding what is important to measure as standard. Questions we have is, who do we review quarterly or yearly? Uh, and how do you aggregate supplier reviews from our global teams? So 
I, I don't want to be a broken record here, and so I'll, I'll start off. And so you really need to identify um, uh, you if you, like I said earlier, if you uh, t tag QBRs to every single supplier, you would need a army on hand internally to manage and regulate that, and that's that's really not the goal. And so um, you can handle it a couple of ways. There's some set. So obviously, identify those mission critical ones. So establish QBRs for those mission critical suppliers or two years or, or even annually. And secondly, you can almost establish a monthly cadence of reporting and tracking of standards where um, let's, let's say, for instance, you have a supplier that, um, while not preferred, might need to go on autopilot based off of uh, internal bandwidthing issues. If you can just maybe request that group to send over uh, re requested reports to, to maybe monitor a couple of uh, a couple of KPIs that are important with that supplier, you can have an analyst internally really run through those and make sure trends are in the right direction. If they're not, um, really work on a, an ad hoc corrective action call. Maybe that happens every you know, once a year or just whenever is best for your team to handle those bandwidth issues. So um, it's, it's definitely difficult at times for, with, when building SRM programs, managing that, that, that perfect storm of, we want the perfect supplier, but we also have the, the back and forth of, of managing uh, what we can and can't do from a bandwidth perspective. Um, I think there's a second part there. Gab, any, anything else that I might've missed over there that I kind of dived into? No, yeah, I think you touched on everything. And you know, something that a, a little, a quick tip that we, you know, we like to implement is, you know, if you're really just starting out and trying to understand who to include and who not to include, you know, create a pilot program. and. Um, see how things work out. And if you need to change that iteration of those quarterly business reviews, whether I shouldn't say quarterly, whether that is quarterly or annually, um, you could do that and then base, base the program off of proof of concept. So that's, you know, just a quick tip and see if how that works. Yeah, great. Kenneth, hope that answers your question. I have one more kind of open-ended question for the group and uh, feel free to provide a response here. Um, so does anyone have any interesting feedback or examples of a time when QBR has led to corrective action with a supplier? So my example here, and this is, I uh, use this example, well, not the example, but, but the verbiage behind it earlier in my presentation, but I said, uh, this acts as like a sanity check for you. And so we had a, a supplier with, with, with many pain points. And um, essentially when we established these KPIs within the agreement, I didn't think they interpreted that we weren't being serious, I guess. And so they just yesed us and signed the agreement. And fast forward, not even a year down the road, this is our second or third QBR with the group at this point. And not only were they failing to provide uh, QBR, uh, excuse me, uh, KPI metrics that were uh, established in the agreement, the transparency wasn't there, but they were just slipping across the board. So before even the year anniversary with the supplier happened, we were able to pivot to do internal corrective action with our client to identify that supplier they were looking for in the beginning. So um, it's one of those things where you have a bunch of uh, success stories, but I really wanted to go into the, a story of, you know, even when the QBR turns into a moment of, oh no, we might've made the wrong decision. It gives you that ability to pivot to make the correction sooner rather than later, which is really important. What tools do you use for benchmarking, CAP Research, Score, Gartner? So uh, we have a lot of internal benchmarking figures and data that we've established over the years. We have a lot of uh, spend analysis and spend data that we've had collected from our clients. And we've also had it while going out to market. Um, and so that's kind of built up and established in our own determined platform and uh, what we lean against when we uh, manage and look at, okay, we're out to bid and we have suppliers coming at this unit cost rate of X, how does that manage within what our historical data shows? We have a bunch of internal proprietary uh, data that we lean on and rely there. Gab, any questions there? Or no, I think you, yeah, you, you covered it. Any other questions or anything else that we might have uh, overlooked or anyone needs additional clarity on? Our emails are there, so if there's anything that pops in your head later, uh, feel free to reach out to myself or Gabriella and we'd be more than happy to uh, give you some uh, feedback. Oh, we did see, I do see one uh, remark from Bob. Uh, suppliers are usually very happy to receive feedback on KPIs and performance. They will value your business more when they feel that you are watching them closely. 
their other customers are not providing feedback. Absolutely. That, that's a great, that's great feedback, Robert. I think uh, when we start getting involved with a lot of our clients, you can almost hear the sigh of relief on the other line with our suppliers because they go, I've been trying to get some SKU consolidation programs or just trying to instill some kind of reporting standards so we can work together as a unit. So that's, that's, a, that's a great point to where um, more often than not, that, that autopilot setting doesn't rest well with suppliers either. So um, they definitely appreciate the, the effort being done uh, when there's, there's proactivity on, on the uh, um, customer side as well. So that's a great point. Do you have any other tips you could uh, give us? You know, I, I think it's important. Transparency is key. And that's one of the things. And it kind of leans back on just that last comment that was made. Suppliers appreciate transparency. Um, they appreciate the proactiveness. And um, also, sometimes you'll be entering these QBRs and don't just don't show up just to say bad things. <laughs> I think that's also important. Um, sometimes uh, arm yourself with a list of positives and negatives. And it's important to just have, have that, that, that clear uh, transparency. And so sometimes uh, if, if, if the suppliers are doing what you need to do, it's important to really highlight what they're doing well because they're, they're going to respond very well with that as well. So um, be, be sure to, to give a, a full report card uh, uh, to, to them. Okay, any other last comments you wanna make, uh, Gabriella? Yeah, I just say, you know, communication is key. Um, oftentimes we, uh, you know, when running our various sourcing events, we find that um, perhaps there was just a miscommunication and that's really what's just, what's driving the maybe harsh feelings towards the supplier or vice versa. But at the end of the day, everybody wants to succeed. So, you know, working together is the goal. And oftentimes if you can find that common ground, you know, that's really helpful. And do you have any um, feedback or uh, uh, maybe tips or that you of uh, things that you should not do? So I just saw George's question yeah. there. Okay, uh, Kathy. we'll go with George's question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, and this is actually great. It's a great, great comment. Sorry. So be sure you include your worst critics of a vendor relationship in any review. If they can't be recognized for their issues and made part of the solution, the resistance will continue. That's an excellent point. And I think that really connects back well, George, to um, I, I made the comment of surveys. And so surveys are wildly transparent, especially when you get it to the local level. It's There's no filter being done. That's great to see, honestly, because the local level and, and the, the field is really who's having that day-to-day -day interaction. And so getting and consolidating that feedback and presenting it to the supplier that that's super valuable because it's something that somebody sitting behind a desk just doesn't have visibility to it, no matter how much you think that we, we, we try to, it's, it's hard to do sometimes. So uh, that, that's a great comment and, and you're right. Um, the, the, uh, the biggest critics do really help get the wheel and, and corrective action moving. So great point there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, any other questions? Oh, we do have another comment from Laura. Um, do you have any recommendations for increasing the response rate internal to surveys or requests for feedback on supplier performance? Something that's a really big home run that I've noticed is having like a giveaway. So like a Amazon $50 gift card giveaway if you finish the survey. Um, r random things like that resonate really well. Um, or even, uh, especially on the MRO side, uh, I, I noticed that a lot of the groups uh, some of the tooling companies really have tons of like free hat giveaways and free gear and free merch and those groups really eat it up. And so um, much like when the office email goes out of free cookies in the kitchen, I mean, it's the same kind of concept. Uh, so lean on that and any kind of reward mechanisms for completing those surveys and, and giveaways really resonate well. Okay, Anything else? Really good. Any, any other questions from the audience? And any closing remarks for, from both of you? No, I appreciate this. Before we finish yeah, up. No, I appreciate this time, Kathy. It was great working with all of you. And uh, Gab, I'm sure yeah. <laughs> you feel the same. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining today. And yeah, we hope that uh, you know it was really informative.
Well, I want to thank you both for coming today and for presenting this very important program to our group today. Um, I, uh, I'm sure that uh, many people were able to get a lot of um, takeaways from this presentation, and we do appreciate um, you coming in and, and presenting. Um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, uh, your company because you have actually put on so many programs for us over the last couple of years. And I want to, you know, thank your group for, for providing uh, fantastic presentations and speakers for us these last couple of years. And especially Kathleen, who has been, I've been coordinating with her as well. So I wanted to just give her a little shout out on that. And um, as I said before, we will be making this recording available. It'll actually be on our YouTube channel and it'll also be listed on our webinar demand section of our homepage. And uh, just a little uh, program note for um, our next program is gonna be on February 17th and it's entitled The Emerging Practices and Extending Visibility and Control in MRO Supply Chain Operations. And our guest moderator will be the Editorial Director of Modern Materials Handling and Supply Chain Management Review. So that one will be uh, on February 17th. So at this point, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today, and I hope everybody has a great afternoon. And thanks again, uh, Ryan and Gabriella. Thank you all. Bye. Bye-bye.